And so when I have a shorter amount of time to work within, I am always going to do my best. Work. Well, hey, friends, welcome back to the podcast. I've been off for the last week. I've been getting, uh, well, we had a um, funeral in the family. And so went to Iowa to attend that, got our kiddo. Easton moved back to Grand Canyon University. Easton produces my YouTube channel where all of these podcasts always reside. So if you're a visual person, you like to watch podcasts versus just listen to the sound of my voice. Hey, go watch it on YouTube. Now, with that being said, a couple of years ago, I got several DMs from a couple of moms who said that the sound of my voice was really good at putting their babies to sleep at nap time or at night. I haven't received one of those uh, DMs in a hot minute. And so, um, so anyway, I wonder if they still, I wonder if it's those babies still <laughs> like the sound of my voice. Um, I'm excited about our topic today. Can I tell you that? I want to talk about the difference between procrastination or is it just that you work best last minute? Are you a procrastinator or are you just working best last minute? I think this is a really important conversation. Also, though, I did want to mention if you happen to be watching me on social media or on YouTube, um, yes, I am in like workout clothes. No, I don't normally wear workout clothes on a podcast, but two things. Number one, I think sometimes we don't do things because we think that it has to be polished. We think it has to look a certain way. We think that we need to show up in a certain manner. And I do think that sometimes the, the way that you dress um, affects the way that you feel and the way you show up for sure. But also like today, I'm getting back from being off for a week. Um, if I take time to do hair, makeup and put on something cute, just so you guys think that I'm smart and accomplished and all of those things, then that's going to add another 30 minutes to my day. And I just don't have a 30 minute capacity. Um, and so sometimes I think we're so worried about how we're going to appear that stuff that needs to get done, doesn't get done. And so I just want to be a good example to you guys that I can still be smart. I can still know what I'm doing. Um, still be, you know, very accomplished in the area of business coaching and still wearing, um, you know, a uh, cheap Amazon tank top. So can we just like normalize that? Also, um, for those of you who are menopausal ageist, okay. So I have been in menopause for seven years. I am post-menopausal. Um, and so, but one of the other reasons I'm wearing, um, not like normally I would put like a sweater over my tank top or something is because I have this weird thing that's been happening for the last couple of years. And I didn't recently know what it was until a friend of mine told me she had the same thing. And there's actually a term for it. And I'm going to tell some of you because this could be a game changer. Okay. Sometimes my arms itch right here. My arms right up by my shoulders itch. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see that my arm is red right there. The women in my coaching groups, um, they know sometimes my arms just itch. I didn't know that it was a whole thing until a friend of mine whose name shall go unmentioned, but it's Samantha. Samantha the other day was telling us, and she's my age or a year older. I'm winning. She's a year older. <laughs> Samantha, I love you so much. She was telling us girls that she has this itchy arm thing and that there's actually, it, there's a diagnosis for it. It's called... Okay. I think it's brachioradial puritis. Okay. I'm going to play like, did you know you can go to Google and you can ask them to pronounce something? Okay. You ready? Here is the pronunciation. I'm going to turn my volume all the way up so you can hear it. Here we go. Pruritus. Once again. Brachioradial pruritus. Brachioradial puritis. Okay. Pruritus. They could have just called it itchy arms and been done with it, but you know, so essentially... <laughs> Um, it is triggered by sun exposure and it is, um, like almost like a nerve damage. Um, and it's just itchy arms. Can you, can you even believe that that's a thing? I'm like, are you stinking kidding me? I mean, how do you just get itchy arms? And it's just like my arms up by my shoulders. It's stupid. So that, uh, that's the second reason I'm in a sleeveless shirt. Okay. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about procrastination or working last minute. So as a lot of my podcast topics do, this topic came up because I was coaching one of the women who was in my mastermind and she was telling me today, um, I'm in a Voxer thread with her and uh, our director of operations and our, um, salesperson and, that she doesn't feel like she's giving herself enough time. She works very last minute to get things done. And she's discouraged and, you know, irritated with herself essentially because she tends to like put things off. And I came back to her really challenging that because sometimes I think that um, women in particular and creative women in particular, okay? So if that's you, like, please keep listening. Sometimes we think we're procrastinating. And the truth of it is, is we're not procrastinating. It's just you work best last minute. All right. 
See, procrastination, like if I looked up the definition of that, which I did right before hitting record here, it means to put off or delay, especially something that requires immediate attention. Okay, so one of the things that I've learned is sometimes we think that we should be giving something immediate attention because we're living in this like long, huge list of shoulds and how I should behave and what I should wear on the podcast and what I should look like as a business coach and how I should show up on social. Like we have such a long line of shoulds. And so we're thinking I should be doing things along, you know, uh, much sooner than what I am. And, and perhaps sometimes yes. Okay. But I heard this quote one time and let me see um, if I can look up who said this quote, I should have done this before we got started, but I read somewhere and I've never forgotten this, that procrastination, if you are a procrastinator, so procrastination is the arrogant assumption. Okay. It's Bishop Rosie O'Neill, right? It's the arrogant assumption that God owes you another chance to do tomorrow what he gave you the chance to do today. And I was like, whoa, 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 what, 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 okay. Procrastination is the arrogant assumption that God's going to give you tomorrow what you were told to do today, the opportunity to do something tomorrow. That I remember when I read that years ago, I'm like, oh, so so that is intentionally kicking a ball down the court um, when you know in your nowhere it probably should be happening today. That is something different than just working well last minute. Okay. If you truly are procrastinating, it's usually because of one of two reasons. I personally think number one, um, you are scared. <laughs> you're it's a lot of times procrastination is putting off something because you're literally terrified to do it. Am I going to do it wrong? Am I, do I even know what I'm doing? Um, I don't want to do this. I'm scared. It's going to be awful. And so you keep kicking the can down the road. I think that that is often what procrastination comes from, or um, it's a big, hard, and scary thing. And therefore, you just keep putting it off because you don't want to do big, hard, and scary, And I, which I think is like human nature, right? So a lot of times, I think that um, procrastination is fear-based. And I think that we procrastinate on um, doing things that we're uncomfortable with doing. I think that that's really, really different than understanding how you are wired. And some of you are like me in that you're just wired to do things last minute. Okay. So in recent years, friends, I have really, I feel like done a good job at a couple of things in my life. One of them is really coming to terms with how I'm wired and stopping fighting things. And, and the truth is, you know what? Like, I really need to ask the Lord, is this the truth? Because the truth is I've always been pretty okay with me. I mean, are there things that I wish were different about myself? Yeah. Are there things that I'm constantly working at to, you know, improve how I react to people, how I react to circumstances, how I behave, how I talk, how I think? Absolutely. But I have really got comfortable with the fact that God wired me in a certain way. And if I needed to be wired in a different way to do on this side of heaven, what God has asked me to do, then surely he would have created me differently. I mean, God is not shocked that Jen is really last minute. Like he's not up there wringing his hands going, good grief. I can't believe Jennifer Allwood works as last minute as she does. He already knew that before he asked me to do what it is that I'm doing. Okay. If you guys think that I had these notes written up two weeks ago for this particular podcast, you are sadly mistaken. I wrote them 10 minutes ago. And, and I think we just need to get better at saying like the quiet things out loud. Just because I work last minute does not mean that the, the meat is any less. It doesn't mean that I'm less smart. It doesn't mean that I am a procrastinator. It doesn't mean that anything other than it means that Jen works best under pressure. Okay. Can we just normalize some of us working best under pressure? And for you creative women in particular, I really want to dive deep into to some of this because I think for some of you, it's going to free you. And, um, and right now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, I am not somebody that works best under pressure. I do not work last minute. Okay. But you know, 10 people who do, I want you to forward this podcast onto them right now, if you would, because somebody needs to be set free by hearing some of what I've got to say today. Okay. So there are a couple of different things I want to discuss. One is there's something out there called Parkinson's law, which I always have to really think about, um, because Parkinson's disease is what like my father-in-law God rest his soul, passed away from Parkinson's law essentially means that you're going to work into the number of hours that you have available to you. So this is why you can have a full weekend with nothing on your calendar. And you think to yourself, I'm going to get 57 things done around this house. I am going to, you know, be 
get so much off my to-do list, get so much accomplished. And because you have nothing going on for the weekend, you actually get diddly squat done. The opposite of that is you have a couple of hours on a Saturday afternoon and somehow you manage to get the garage cleaned and the paint cleaned out and things on the calendar for, you know, the next week you get the grocery shop and like you knock out 10 things in, in a two hour time period. It's because we work into the number of hours that are basically allotted to us. Okay. So can I talk to you for just a little bit about like the creative brain? And by the way, this is not something that I learned in college. This is not something that um, I read in a book. This is something that the Holy Spirit like has just taught me through osmosis. Okay. So when you are a super creative person, like as I am, all right. Um, a lot of times that means that our brains are just very all over the place currently as I speak, I am designing, um, bedrooms and furniture for a potential new purchase, another home in Florida for Jason and I, for, um, another Airbnb. And, um, I have like four bedrooms plus a loft that I'm designing, you know, and living kitchen. Jason is in like absolute amazement. <laughs> and I think he's also like just mouth open because, um, I am, you know, screenshotting pictures and Googling and making like design boards and, and just going absolute nuts. And he said to me on the airplane yesterday, he goes, you are just in heaven right now, aren't you? And I'm like, I am because this type of work for a creative brain, oh, it's just so much fun. It's like, I can, I can do this room and this room and the kitchen at the same time. Like I, I don't, I, I don't have to compartmentalize. My brain is all over the place, which made me really darn good at being a creative and makes you guys really darn good at it too, some of you. But here's what I need for you to know. If you have a very creative brain, okay? If you have almost too much time on your hands in order to work, Sometimes you're not going to do your best work. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when your mind is all over the place, like when that is just normal for you, whether you are super creative, whether you have ADHD, a touch of that, it's undiagnosed, what have you, um, whether you have menopause brain, like when your brain has too much room to ping pong, then it's going to do exactly that. It's going to ping pong. So if I have to speak inside of somebody's Facebook group, which I do this all the time, I go into other business groups, I talk about the importance of email, I talk about the importance of mini revenue streams, I talk about the importance of social media, whatever. So if I have to go in and talk to a group of a couple hundred people, like I just recently did, and two weeks you know, before that, my team says to me, hey, Jen, you should probably write the notes on that talk since you're going to be speaking in somebody else's group. I'm thinking to myself, I got two weeks. I mean... <laughs> In my head, I'm like, yeah, it's never going to happen. But if I try to sit down, my mind will still be thinking about this new place in Florida. I'm also going to be thinking about the fact that I just dropped off our son at college, which then is going to remind me I've got to ship something out to Noah, which is going to make me think, oh, Jason probably needs to go to the post office today for Fairway Finest. Anyway, I could put it with him, which makes me remember, oh gosh, my husband is hot. That makes me remember I'm supposed to get a babysitter for Friday night because let's go on a date night. And like, this is what my brain does because I've got two weeks to think about this. Okay. Instead, if two hours prior to me going into coach, I sit down, I know in my head, I've got two hours and dial it in, Jen. And I know in my knower that I can dial it in for two hours because it's like, there's a, there's a set amount of time. I can force myself to stay in the moment. I can force myself not to think about a hundred other things. I may try, my brain may try to go outside of the lines, right? But I know I've got to pull it back in because I've got two hours. So what actually happens is when I have two weeks, I do crap work. When I have two hours, I do my best. Because I'm like, I, I, I know that there is a deadline. I know I work well with deadlines. I know I work best under pressure. I know I focus most under pressure. And so when I have a shorter amount of time to work within, I am always going to do my best work. Some of you are not procrastinating you just don't understand that about yourself yet. And I just want to like pull off the lid on that and let you peek inside of, of the way I'm wired in hopes that for the handful of you that are also wired in the same way that you quit shaming yourself. Listen, people want your best work. They don't give a rat's butt if it is, I was going to say rat's ass, let's just keep it at butt. They don't care if you wrote it two hours or two weeks ahead of time. See, some people think, okay, if you bought my birthday gift last minute, it means you weren't thinking about it. Nope. I was thinking 9 million different things for your birthday. It was just two hours before your birthday party that I finally landed on what I thought would actually 
actually be the best gift for you. I knew I had to make the best decision under pressure. It forced me to really sit and think about your personality, what you love, your love language. And I was like, bada boom, bada bing. This is what I need to get her for a birthday. It's not that I haven't been thinking about you all year long. It's not that me leaving your gift shopping to the last minute means I don't love you. It's that I work best when I'm down to no time left. And some of you work the same way. Listen, when I used to do public speaking, which I no longer do, except I'm lying. I am going down to 30A where we have Bougie on the Beach, our first Airbnb. I am going down there the week after next to speak to a small group of women um, for a mastermind for my friend Mindy. Um, so I'm breaking my own rule, but it's only because then I get to go to our house down there. Two, I get to go buy the new property again. Um, three, and it's for a friend, personal call in favor. So otherwise though, I don't do uh, public speaking anymore. But when I used to do public speaking, I would wait and do my speeches the night before. When I used to do local television um, here in Kansas City, I'd write my notes. Sometimes Jason would always get me a driver to the station. A lot of times I'm writing my notes in the back of a car. Um, you know, I, I have a, a good, good friend who used to work for a very big name on social media. Um, someone who is a, a business coach, a male, and had a lot of live events. And she told me that they would sit down as a team when they got to the location that they were doing their live events years ago, be like, okay, what are we talking about tomorrow? And it, it, when I heard her say that, that freed me so much because sometimes I think that people think if they're doing things last minute, then they're just throwing crap together. There's going to be nothing good that comes out of it. Nope. Sometimes when you work best last minute, um, you know, like in that situation, you possibly were able to really figure out when you got to the live event and you sat down with the team and you all put your heads together, like what do our people most need today? Um, you, you allow the Holy Spirit to kind of come in and on the spot tell you what you need to be doing. I mean, I'm not saying this is how everybody should work. There are so many successful people out in the world who, you know, are planners and they're the exact opposite of me. And like, that's perfect. I'm sitting here thinking of um, Amy Porterfield, who some of you probably know and follow, and she's just amazing. Um, she is way further ahead of me in business, you know, podcast downloads, all the things like Amy is, um, she's just magical. She's so smart. Um, I've had the honor of just having dinner with her for the first time in Nashville last year. Um, I guarantee you, Amy Porterfield is not sitting down the night before she gives a keynote and writing her notes. She is very like, um, calculated and disciplined. And those are not bad things, by the way. Sometimes I think the word calculated can sound wrong, but she, uh, she's a planner and that is how she's wired. And it works so good for her. I just, I wish, I wish that I was more like that, but I'm just not. So, you know, I have ultimate respect for the people who are running a tight ship, um, Honey, I'm not running a tight ship, but I'm running a very fun ship and I'm running a ship that works best for the way I steer. Some of you are the exact same way. Now I want to do just the tiniest bit of life coaching here. Okay. Because here's what I want for you to know. For those of you who are wired like me and your last minute. Okay. I want you to understand that the way you think about how you work is going to change a lot of your results. Okay. The way that you think produces your feelings, which then makes you behave in a certain way, which then gives you your results. Okay. So this is life coaching 101. I am a certified life coach, by the way, if you didn't know that. Okay. So if I think to myself, ah, I'm such a procrastinator. I want you to think about like the difference in these two examples. Okay. Because I really think working last minute for a lot of you, it's like a, it's a ninja move. It is a superpower. Hi, baby. I'm recording a podcast, Mr. Allwood, everyone. Um, and so, okay, so let's, if you're thinking about like superpower versus um, procrastinating, okay? So I want you to think about how you feel about the word procrastinating or procrastinator or procrastination. I mean, as soon as I think, Jen, you're procrastinating, that makes me instantly feel bad. Okay. So how you think produces how you feel. So I think I'm procrastinating. Then I feel bad. Okay. How I feel is going to produce what I do. So if I think to myself, I'm procrastinating, which makes me feel bad. I'm not going to do my best work. I'm not going to show up at a 10. 
um, I'm not going to be in a good headspace. Instead, I'm going to be thinking to myself, am I even meant for entrepreneurship? Uh, can anybody even be successful when they're wired like this? Why can't I be like Amy? Why can't I be like this girl? Why can't I be like that? So then what happens when I'm in that sort of behavior is then my results line up with that. It's like, it's like this cat chasing its tail. It's like self-prophecy. If I think to myself, Jen, you're such a procrastinator and it makes me feel so bad, I'll end up doing bad work and get bad results. Instead, instead, if you will think to yourself, okay, mm, girl, I work last minute, so stinking good. I am so glad that God created me like this. Do I wish I gave myself some extra margin? Sure, but do I also know I work best under pressure? Absolutely sure. So I'm going to make sure that I start this at whatever time. I know that one of my like superpowers, one of my ninja skills is working last minute. When I think that I kind of start thinking, all right, I'm thinking, you know, this is, this is a ninja skill of mine. This is a superpower that makes me kind of feel like a baddie. Kind of makes me feel like, you know, uh, that I know what I'm doing, that, that I have figured out how I'm wired how God wired me and I'm working in that capacity. And so then when I'm thinking, this is a superpower and then I'm feeling, you know, kind of froggy, I'm doing a little dance on the YouTube right now. Then I actually start, you know, making decisions based out of that. I actually, like my behavior lines up with that. I start behaving more like a business owner. I, I, and you know, because if you feel like a rock star or a business owner, and then you start, you know, behaving like that, you're running your business then that way. And so it's not something then that's like clothed in shame. Instead, it's like, this is what makes me good at doing what I'm doing. See, some of you, you have forgotten like the whole God piece of how you're wired. If God needed you to be wired a certain way in order to run the business that he has given you on this side of heaven, I guarantee you, he would have made certain that Jennifer Allwood was very organized and ran a very tight ship, but she doesn't. And I've got a fun ship <laughs> and it's a pretty ship. <laughs> and I know exactly, you know, the, the, what my ship can do. And so stop feeling so bad today about how you're wired. All right. It is no shock to God that I work last minute and that possibly you do too. And I'm not saying that there's not things about myself that I shouldn't be trying to work on or giving myself more capacity. I will tell you, if you listened to the podcast episode that Jason and I did about the nervous system, um, let me see if I can find this for you. Cause some of you are going to want to listen to this. Hang on just a second. Uh, Jennifer Allwood and podcast. Somebody's just dying right now that I'm typing, um, on my podcast. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Please go ahead and just send me a letter. I don't care. Okay. So came out at the end of May. It's called regulating your nervous system as a business owner. What episode number was that? Oh, I'm looking at YouTube. I probably shouldn't be doing that. But anyway, it's a two-part series and Jason um, is with me on the second one. Um, when you have a nervous system that's completely out of whack, like I do, first of all, you then learn ways to calm your nervous system down. So number one is I quit shaming myself about the way that I'm not wired and really started embracing the way that I am. Um, and number two, you realize the even though I'm wired to work last minute, what working last minute, the older I get is not doing great things to my nervous system. So I'm just having to give myself a little extra padding. And um, I think that it would be beneficial for some of you to start thinking the same way. Listen, some of you are procrastinating and you do need a, somebody to give you a hug and a swift kick in the butt. And I can do that inside of any of my coaching. Uh, some of you though, you just need to start embracing the way that God wired you and quit shaming yourself because when you're shaming yourself and you're just feeling bad about yourself, then you're behaving in bad ways. And the results of your business are actually showing that just knock it off. If you work well, last minute, embrace it, do it to the glory of God, help free somebody else. Send this podcast episode to someone who, you know, needs to hear this. And get real okay with how you're wired and what your superpowers are. Is this helpful for anybody? Gosh, I hope it is. I hope I set someone free today. Do me a hot solid. If you're listening here on YouTube, will you just give me a comment below? Easton loves it when I get comments, as do I. And if um, if you want to screenshot this and link to it on Instagram, I would be delighted. All right, friends. I may or may not be more prepared next time. Probably not. Love you much. We'll see you then. All right. Bye-bye. Hi, babe. Uh, Say hello to Easton Allwood, who is, I'm still recording. How are you talking today? 
You're, oh, you already talked to him? Really? Favorite parent? Got it. 